All right, my friend, welcome to this special video on the best supplements for muscle growth for beginners and for advanced trainees. This video is amazing. And first off, it's gonna be way more in depth than your average top five supplement BS videos or articles you may have seen online. What we're gonna do is actually cover the research backed supplements based into the best choices, ones that are maybes, some that we should skip, and then dangerous ones we should absolutely avoid. We're gonna cover all this in the video. We're gonna break down what works, why it works, and how much you should take. I know you're gonna learn a ton in this video. So get out your pen and paper, take some notes, and let's dive on in. Fitfatherproject.com all right, so let's dive into this video on the best supplements for muscle growth, whether you're a beginner or an advanced trainee. And personally, this topic is very important to me in my life because I used to be incredibly passionate about building muscle and I actually competed in bodybuilding for many, many years. And here's a picture of me at my best. And so I was obsessed with the question of how do I actually maximize my muscle growth and all the training and the eating I'm doing? What are some other things I can take that work? And I'm gonna be the first one to admit that I've, like, especially in my early age, uh, wasted thousands of dollars of my parents' money because they were footing the bill at the time on supplements that just didn't work. They didn't live up to the marketing hype and the claim. And after going to medical school, I started to learn the science behind some of this stuff. So my promise is we're going to break this down. So let's get straight into it. Which muscle building supplements actually work? Well, the first one is creatine monohydrate. I cannot emphasize this enough. This single supplement has more research on it than pretty much every other thing on this list. It's probably one of the most proven ergogenic supplements, meaning a supplement that increases your performance. And what creatine does is it actually um, is a type of energy that your muscles can use in this creatine phosphate pathway that helps increase your strength and your power output. So you take creatine, you're going to have more energy in your muscles and power output to lift heavier weights, which is going to lead to muscle growth. So that's one way that creatine works. We also found from the new research is that creatine may directly stimulate the muscle building pathways in your body through mTOR signaling that leads to new muscle growth and protein synthesis. So creatine might help you build muscle, period not just by the proxy of it helping you get stronger. Um, and so there are certain people that are creatine responders and non-responders, meaning some people creatine works really well, other people it doesn't work quite as well. Um, so that's up for you to kind of decide and figure out. And creatine is also not necessarily safe for everyone. If you have, you know, although creatine is not harmful on your kidneys, if you do have some kind of kidney impairment, this might not be the best supplement. And as always, check with your doctor to make sure this is good for you. I'm just telling you that the research backed supplement creatine monohydrate is one of the best supplements supplements. And back in the day, we used to prescribe these large loading doses. So you need to take 20 to 30 grams for several days and then back down to a maintenance dose. Turns out that you don't need to do that. You can just take five grams. Post-workout seems like the best time from the research, but it really doesn't matter too much. But take five grams every single day and it's going to help improve your muscle gains. Next supplement that's absolutely essential is protein powder. And the reason it's quote unquote essential is that for most of us, it's tough for us to meet our higher protein intakes um, without doing some kind of supplementation from merely a convenience standpoint. So you do not need protein powder in your diet to build muscle. If you're eating plenty of good food and you have lots of great proteins in your diet, like eggs, grass fed chicken, ground beef, and you have regimented meals, you do not need protein powder to make muscle gains, but it is very useful. Why? Well, whey protein powder in particular is is a common thing you're going to see on the markets and whey protein is very high in a particular amino acid called L-leucine and leucine is the specific amino acid that seems to trigger muscle growth and muscle protein synthesis the most and some of these protein powders have supplemental leucine and some of the highest leucine sources on the planet so for me it's kind of a no-brainer to take um, some post-workout protein so 25 to 35 grams post-workout before having my next meal is a great way to know that I'm getting the essential amino acids that my muscles need to recover and stimulate muscle growth. Again, it's not necessary, but it's very convenient, especially because we know that muscle building doesn't just come down to the supplements and the training, but also getting enough quality calories. So sometimes supplementing with a protein powder with some sources of some carbs and healthy fats can help you reach your calorie target. So you can even use protein powder as like a mini meal between lunch and dinner that just gives you those extra good calories that you need to put on muscle mass. Because if you're under eating, none of these supplements will work. So for those reasons, uh, protein powders are great. Now, whey protein powder is phenomenal, and what you're gonna see is a very common post-workout protein, but there are so many other different kinds of proteins that are fine. It really doesn't matter too much as long as you're meeting your protein um, target daily protein intake, which we recommend on the higher side for guys, just to play it safe, around um, 0.8, to one gram per pound of body weight. And we're gonna put the kilogram conversions in the description below so you have that as well if you do not use our silly US measuring system. So 
Next supplement on this list is a little bit unconventional, um, not something a lot of people talk about, but that's vitamin D3. Um, and vitamin D3 is a miracle vitamin. It actually functions more like a hormone in many senses. It's great for increasing our immune system and research shows that guys who are low in vitamin D3, which is so many people who supplement, can actually get an increase in their testosterone levels naturally. Um, it can help your muscles actually repair from exercise. It does so much more than just strengthening your bones, which is what we thought of vitamin D is doing for so, so many years. Another great thing I, I, I recommend about vitamin D is this is part of your, just your baseline overall health stack. It's going to help keep your immune system more resilient. And I'll tell you this, one of the worst things you can do when you're trying to build muscle and you're training hard is you're getting all run down and you get sick and you're out of the gym for one, two weeks. Like that's absolutely terrible. So vitamin D3 is a good thing that has that testosterone boosting benefit and can actually help keep your immune system strong. So for that reason, I think of it as a best choice staple supplement, as well as this next supplement here that a lot of people don't talk about in the context of muscle building, but that's good quality probiotics. So probiotics are those healthy gut bacteria um, that live in your intestinal tract that help you break down food, increase and in, in, empower your immune system, and even communicate to your brain uh, uh, around your hunger and satiety signals. And the research shows that there are certain gut bacteria, um, so for example, a certain species of the lactobacillus that actually can contribute to losing fat and building muscle. And we're learning so much more about how important these little gut microbes are for our overall health and well-being. And so for me, it's a no-brainer knowing that high-quality food, a strong immune system, is essential for building muscle that we make sure that we get this area of our life handled and get good gut probiotics. Because I want to make sure all that great food, you're spending your money and your time preparing and you're eating, that you're actually breaking it down, digesting it well, assimilating it, and staying strong. And gut bacteria have the research backed um, to prove that they really do help with these factors. So those are some of the best supplements. Let's get into the maybes. And these are some that could be good in certain circumstances. We're going to explain why. First one is beta alanine. And if you're familiar with beta alanine, if you've taken it before, then you'll really be familiar with the characteristic tingling that beta alanine gives you. After you take it around 15 to 20 minutes later, you'll find that your face and your hands start tingling a little bit. Um, and it's an interesting kind of side effect of beta alanine. But what beta alanine essentially does is helps our muscles recycle lactic acid through this thing called the Cori cycle and gives our muscles more endurance. So beta alanine works with this alanine ornithine cycle to give you more endurance. So it's good for people who are not pure strength athletes. What the research shows is beta alanine can actually increase exercise performance for exercise that is roughly 60 seconds to onwards to two, three minutes. So these are longer sets than your average weightlifter who might have a time under tension of a set of maybe 20 seconds to 45 seconds. So if you're just a power and strength athlete and you're doing short burst activity like lifting weights kind of sets, then beta alanine might not actually benefit you. But if you're in a little more of a hybrid sport that has a combination of some cardio and some strength, so you do things like mixed martial arts, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you do some uh, still sprinting and high intensity interval training that's a little bit longer then you're just burst strength activity. Beta alanine could work, but if you're a pure strength athlete and looking to build muscle, it's not gonna be a pure muscle builder. So it's in the maybe category. For me personally, I don't take it. I, mean, I personally like to do more strength-based, um, short uh, time under tension sets, so I don't use beta alanine, but it's there. Next thing that a lot of people talk about is branched chain amino acids, BCAAs. And it turns out from the research, BCAAs, um, when you're eating enough protein in your diet, so hence why we talked about the protein powder and those protein targets, don't help you achieve additional muscle building benefits. They can help you when you're dieting prevent muscle loss. They are anti-catabolic in that effect. And you may have seen those BCA powders that people take, mix them in your drinks, they make your water taste like watermelon fruit punch, and you think you're building muscle. Well, it's not actually helping you in that respect, but they can be useful when you're dieting. So this is something that I recommend you save for times when you're doing a cut, and you wanna have a little more assurance that you're not chewing through muscle as you're in a calorie deficit. If you're eating a good muscle building nutrition plan, you're taking your creatine, you got your quality protein, more BCA, on top of that are not going to help you build muscle because those whey protein powders or those high quality plant-based protein powders are loaded with BCAAs. There's plenty in your diet as well. You don't need to supplement with them for the purposes of building muscle. Next supplement is ZMA. Um, so this is a zinc magnesium combination um, that people typically take at night because there's some benefit with the magnesium in helping relax your brain and your body to help you sleep better. And there's research showing that guys who are, who are zinc and magnesium deficient who supplement with zinc and magnesium see improvements in their testosterone levels. So that's cool, and it is a, it is a research-backed benefit, but that only applies if you're deficient in zinc and magnesium. So 
What I should have actually put up here in the best choices is a full spectrum multivitamin to make sure that your bases for things like zinc and magnesium are covered because if you are running around deficient in micronutrients, something like ZMA could help you. But if you have those micronutrients covered with a good one a day multivitamin, we'll link some below in the description, then more ZMA is not gonna be um, helpful for you. Although if you do find it helps you sleep better and get deeper sleep, that can translate indirectly to better muscle gains because remember the sleep and the recovery is just as important as the training and the nutrition. So the next supplement that could be good um, is called citrulline malate. Um, and this is a supplement that works um, through these nitric oxide boosting pathways. It's not a pure nitric oxide booster, which we're gonna talk about a little bit, but research shows that if you take this uh, 60 minutes before exercise at a very high dose, around eight grams, it can um, lessen the muscle damage markers after exercise. So taking it before your workouts can help decrease the soreness and maybe improve your recovery. But for me, it's like kind of a foo-foo supplement. It's definitely not a staple like your creatine, your protein powder, your good nutrition. So it's something that I would never personally spend my money on buying, but there is some compelling research. And if you want to get really technical with a supplement stack, it could be something worth considering putting in, but it's definitely not a staple. So let's get to the supplements to skip. Um, and these are the skip supplements are different than the avoid supplements. The avoid supplements can be flat out bad. The skip ones are like, meh, they're just not worth it. They're not necessarily da dangerous for your health. So let's start off with the nitric oxide boosters. So the foundational supplement that's in all these nitric oxide booster supplements is L-arginine, which is an amino acid that again is involved with this arginine, citrulline, ornithine cycle that ultimately leads to some vasodilation. You get a better pump from your workouts. And what the research shows is that yes, arginine at high doses can help increase blood flow, but it doesn't actually translate to better muscle building results. For things like erectile dysfunction, high doses of arginine in these NO boosters can help. For things like muscle building, it doesn't really stack up to the hype. So in concept, it's great, right? We're gonna take some NO boosters, we're gonna have better blood flow, our muscles are getting more nutrients, we're gonna get huge. They just don't pan out, and most of these are just scams. They're like $60 plus a bottle, and you could have a full year supply of creatine monohydrate for 60 bucks. So let's be honest where we're gonna spend our money, skip the NO boosters. Next one to skip is glutamine. And again, it's not that glutamine's bad. It's just that we thought around 10 years ago that glutamine was the holy grail amino acid for muscle recovery. And it was touted as like, oh, post-exercise, you need to take glutamine because your muscles, the main uh, amino acid in your skeletal muscles is glutamine, so that's gonna help us recover. Again, it does not stack up with the research. Glutamine does not help you recover faster from workouts. There's plenty of glutamine already in your protein powder, so more glutamine's not gonna help. What glutamine does help with is actually healing your digestion digestive tract. So if you've had um, some kind of gastrointestinal infection or you have um, inflammation in your GI tract, taking high dose glutamine can help in that case, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about muscle building and glutamine from the research does not stack up. So it's a skip it supplement. Um, the next one I would say is most testosterone boosters. So everyone wants to say, oh, you take my natural test booster and you're going to get huge like some of these professional bodybuilders. That's total crap. What most of these testosterone boosters have in them is a series of different kinds of herbs maybe a couple vitamins and minerals, things like zinc and magnesium, maybe a little bit of boron, maybe some vitamin D if it's a good test booster. But point being is that these don't really translate to real world results. Um, most of these are just a waste of your time and your money. They may marginally boost your testosterone, but that's not necessarily gonna translate to better results in the gym, like some of these staple supplements. So I say stick, skip most testosterone boosters. There are probably a couple really good ones on the market, but for the most part, skip them. So let's get into the avoid, because these are supplements that are, might be tempting for you to check out, but I'm gonna caution you against, because I think they're gonna run counter to your long-term muscle building efforts. The first one is cheap mass gainers. And these are these weight gainer protein powders that have 1,000 plus calories per serving. And why is this tempting? Well, it's tempting because we know that calories are super important for muscle building. If you're not eating enough good quality food and calories, none of this stuff is gonna work. So if you are training hard and you're doing good workouts, but you're under eating, you're not gonna gain mass. So the, the way these things are marketed is, hey, take our mass gainer, here's 1,000 calories, we're gonna have all your nutritional needs covered. But the problem is, is most of these mass gainers are filled with cheap, cheap carbs and low quality protein. If you look on the label of a lot of these things, you'll see the first main ingredient is dextrose, which is basically corn sugar. It's just broken down like, carbohydrates from corn. It's very dirt cheap. It's not good for your body. And it's like 100 grams of pure 
sugar. So there are so many better ways if you want to make a mass gainer than getting 100 grams of sugar with some low quality soy protein powder or some crap that they throw in there. Avoid all that stuff. You can make your own mass gainer shakes, which I do recommend by putting in something like whey protein that you buy from a high quality source, some oatmeal, so a couple tablespoons of peanut butter and a banana, and maybe a little coconut oil. That is a natural mass gainer shake that is filled with high quality ingredients, not crap fillers and low quality sugar. So there are probably, again, one or two good guys out there in the mass gainer world, but they're few and far between for the most part. Steer clear of those. Next thing is pro hormones or pro steroids. So what these are are oral, um, oral compounds a lot, most of them over the counter um, that are derivatives of something like a steroid compound like testosterone. They're like a pro steroid. So they can add a methyl group or one little thing to the testosterone molecule to make it different than a steroid, but then your body can convert it into a steroid in your body. So you, you may have heard about pro, pro hormones, especially in the 90s when they were getting very big, where a lot of people, uh, like androstenedione was a big one that some of the baseball players got in trouble for taking. And our bodies can use these pro hormones and convert them into steroids in our bodies, but the problem is one, they can be highly liver toxic, and two, they can shut down your natural testosterone production. So it's a really, really short-term fix, and it's not too much different than actually going out and doing an actual steroid cycle, which we recommend against. If you were to do an actual steroid cycle, a lot of people do go forth and do these really complex protocols after the fact where they heal their bodies and they re-kick start their natural testosterone production. The problem is most people who take these pro-hormones don't go to the extent of doing that proper protocol if you were to go down and do something like steroids. So they end up having shut down testosterone levels, their livers are inflamed, and they're in worse shape than they started. So it's a really, really bad idea. I don't recommend you go down the hormone uh, route in any of these instances, particularly on the pro-hormones, because they seem like they're safe. They're over the counter, right? But they're still very dangerous, and there are people that have legitimately died from taking pro-hormones, so not a good idea. Uh, and the next thing I wanna talk about, and the final thing in this video, is SARMs and some growth hormone um, increasing supplements. So SARMs, that stands for Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator. It's a mouthful. What it essentially means is inside each of your cells, there's the nucleus. And the nucleus has these receptors that these steroid androgen molecules can bind to. So when testosterone is getting into our cells, it diffuses through that cell membrane, goes into the nucleus, and binds to this androgen receptor. And then it tells the nucleus to, hey, go transcribe and make all these proteins for muscle building. That's how testosterone signals. What a SARM is, is a molecule that binds to that same satellite receptor in the nucleus that helps uh, basically create this cascade of muscle building uh, proteins that are going to be developed. And so these are compounds that are made in the lab that act like testosterone in the body, but they're not necessarily hormones themselves. And the problem is that we don't have the research or really know the harms of what SARMs could be doing to our bodies. Because with something like testosterone, uh, it's a natural compound in our bodies that can controls a whole cascade of things. And SARMs are very different. This is laser targeting that one specific receptor to hope that downstream it's gonna build some muscle. And there are some anecdotal evidence and case studies that people are getting good results from these SARMs and are experiencing muscle building, but we don't know at what cost and what other problems could be happening. And very similar to pro-hormones, there is some evidence too that SARMs may actually harm through some indirect way your natural testosterone production. And this is why people are recommending if you do do SARMs that you run post-cycle therapy to re-kickstart your natural testosterone production. So for me, this is again, just kind of like dicey stuff that we don't know enough about right now. Um, and it's not something that I would spend my money or my time or even risk my health on when there's basic foundational stuff that actually works. And the last thing I want to talk about is growth hormone um, and its implications on muscle building. Because a lot of people hear, oh, that guy must be taking growth hormone and he's huge. Well, first off, um, growth hormone is a prescription medication given to people in certain medical circumstances for anti-aging purposes, and people who get it for other reasons are abusing it from a bodybuilding perspective. And what growth hormone does do naturally is increase fat burning. It's not actually a huge muscle builder at normal physiologic doses. It's only when these bodybuilders are taking massive amounts of growth hormone, we're talking thousands of dollars per month in growth hormone, that they do see some muscle building benefits to it. But it's at super high doses, and it does come at a cost. That high supplementation of growth hormone uh, can actually cause insulin resistance resistance, like a pre-diabetes, it can cause all sorts of parts of your bodies to grow, internal organs, 
facial bones, fingers. There's some weird stuff that can happen. And again, growth hormone is more of a fat burning substance that our bodies can naturally produce. And it's not something that you want to go down the rabbit hole of messing with and supplementing with. It's dangerous stuff. So what I do recommend is if you were interested in increasing your growth hormone for the purposes of leaning up, then do something like intermittent fasting. What the research shows is a 24 hour fast can naturally raise your growth hormone levels by up to 1600%. And this is what happens when you don't eat for a period of time and that actually can be compatible with muscle building. You can see some of our other videos on intermittent fasting, the basics, the rules, and how that can work for muscle building, but that's a natural way to increase growth hormone. So I know this video was in depth. We covered a lot of things. My goal and my hope is that you took one to two things from this video that are take home messages that you can go and apply into your life. I mean, if you're interested in going deeper on muscle building, know that this supplement stuff is supplemental. You need the foundations of the proper training, eating, nutrition. So we have other videos uh, around our Fit Follower Project YouTube channel on the best muscle building workouts, meal plans, and everything else you need to know because that's the more important stuff. So there's gonna be links below in the description as well as uh, links on the end of this video where you can check those out as well. If you like this, you found this valuable and you want more from us, then I want to invite you to subscribe to our Fit Father Project YouTube channel. We have hundreds of videos on muscle building, fat loss, motivation, stretching, everything you need to know to be the best version of yourself and to stay strong and healthy for your family. We're the Fit Father Project. This is what we do. So give us a thumbs up, drop a comment below, hit subscribe and check that little bell to get notified when we publish new videos. And I hope to see you around our channel. Check out our new video we'll be publishing tomorrow and I'll talk to you very soon, my friend.